Um, yeah, I'm Harry. Uh, I study maths. Uh, I write poetry. Uh, so I thought I'd start with a love poem about prime numbers. Um, uh, this is called 59. Uh, I was going to call it prime time loving, but that reaction is why I didn't. Uh, <laughs> so, 59. 59 wakes up on the wrong side of the bed. Realizes all his hairs on one side of his head takes just under a minute to work out that it's because of the way that he slept he finds some clothes and gets dressed. He can't help but look in the mirror and be subtly impressed how he looks rough around the edges and yet casually messed. And as he glances out the window, he sees a side that he is blessed with of 60 from across the street. Now 60 was beautiful. Perfectly trim cuticles, dressed in something suitable and never rude or crude at all. Unimprovable, right on time as usual, more on cue than a snooker ball, but like to play it super cool. 59 wanted to tell her that he knew her favorite flower. He thought of it every second, every minute, every hour, but he knew it wouldn't work. He never get the girl because although she lived across the street, they came from different worlds. So 59 and my 60s perfectly round figure. 60 thought 59 was odd. <laughs> you see, one of his favorite films was 101 Dalmatians. She preferred the sequel. He romanticized the idea they were star-crossed lovers. They could overcome the odds and evens because they had each other while she maintained the strict reason based on her by her mother that separate could not be equal. And though at the time he felt stupid and dumb for trying to love a girl controlled by her stupid mum, he should have been comforted by the simple song, take 59 away from 60, when you're left with the one. And sure enough, after two months of moping around 61 days later, 61 was who he found. He had lost his keys and his parents were out, so one day after school he went into a house and as he noticed the slightly wonky numbers on the door, he wondered why he never introduced himself before. She let him in, his jaw dropped in awe, 61 was like 60, but a little bit more. <laughs> See, she had prettier eyes and an approachable smile. And like him, rough around the edges, casual style, and like him, everything was in disorganized piles, and like him, her mom didn't mind a friend stayed a while because she was like him, and he liked her. He reckoned she would like him if she knew he was like her and it was different this time. I mean, this girl was wicked, so he plucked up the courage and asked for her digits. She said, I'm 61. He grinned, said, I'm 59. Today I've had a really nice time, so tomorrow if you wanted you could come with her to mine. She said, sure. She loved talking to someone just as quirky. So she agreed to this unofficial first date. In the end, he was only ready one minute early, but that didn't matter because she arrived one minute late. And from that moment on, there was nonstop chatter. How they loved X Factor, how they had two factors, how that did not matter. <laughs> Distinctiveness made them better. And by the end of the night, you know, they went together on one day, she was talking about stuck up 60. She noticed that 59 looked a bit shifty. He blushed and told her of his crush, the best thing that never happened because it led to us. And 61 was clever, see, not prone to jealousy. She looked him in the eyes and told him quite tenderly, you're 59, I'm 61 together. We combined to become twice what 60 could ever be. And at this point, 59 had tears in his eyes. So glad to have this one of a kind girl in his life. He told her the very definition of being prime was the only one in himself could his heart divide. And she was the one he wanted to give his heart to. She said she felt the same and as she knew the films were half true because that wasn't real love. The love was just a sample. When it came to real love, they were a prime example. <laughs> Cheers.